I'm Dazzling One, and today I want to touch on a topic that comes up time and time again and often is described as an imminent threat that I've discussed in brief every now and then, but deserves an entire video done on the subject, and that is CERN and the Large Hadron Collider, or the LHC, and the potential consequences of the Hadron Collider as well as theories that it could cause an interruption in the space and time continuum, along with the possibility of accessing alternate dimensions and the occult connection. First off, for those who are not familiar with CERN, they are the European Organization for Nuclear Research started in the year 1954 in Geneva, Switzerland. In the year 1990, British scientist Sir Tim Berners Lee, working at CERN, invents the World Wide Web to meet demands for information sharing between scientists. And in the year 1994, CERN approves construction of the Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest particle accelerator, with an eventual project cost of 10 billion Swiss francs. The Hadron Collider is the world's largest particle accelerator. It was first started up on September 10, 2008. The purpose of the LHC was to explore different areas in physics like the standard model, which is described as, put in layman's terms, as this particle physics. It is a system that attempts to describe the forces, components, and reactions of the basic particles that make up matter. It not only deals with atoms and their components, but the pieces that compose some subatomic particles. This model does have some major gaps, including gravity and some experimental contradictions, and it was posed in the early 1970s. Within the theory, physicists were trying to figure out why some subatomic particles have mass while others are massless. The Higgs boson, also nicknamed the God Particle, after Leon Letterman's book, the God Particle, if the universe is the answer, what is the question? But the Higgs boson, according to the dictionary, is defined as a subatomic particle whose existence is predicted by the theory that unified the weak and electromagnetic interactions. Higgs boson fit into the theory because it was described as the force that acted upon matter and gives matter mass. On July 4, 2012, scientists at CERN discovered a particle that behaves similar to the Higgs boson, proving the theory correct. And on October 8, 2013, Peter Higgs and Frankos Engler were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics after 48 years, finally having their theory proven about Higgs boson as followed. For the theoretical discovery of a mechanism that contributes to our understanding of the origin of mass of subatomic particles, and which recently was confirmed through the discovery of the predicted fundamental particle by the ATLAS and CMS experiments at CERN's Large Hadron Collider. While CERN's intentions seem innocent enough, as far as trying to answer monumental questions in physics, there are some eerie things about CERN just by taking a look at their logo. Triple sixes, so 666 is the mark of the beast, and the fact they have a statue of Shiva outside. Now, the story is that it was a gift from India because of their long association with India. In the Hindu religion, this form of dancing, Lord Shiva, is known as the Nataraj, a symbol of Shakiti, or life force. As a plaque alongside of the statue explains, the belief is that Lord Shiva danced the universe into existence, motivates it, and will eventually extinguish it. Carl Sagan drew the metaphor between the cosmic dance of Nataraj and the modern study of the cosmic dance of subatomic particles. Although that sounds nice in theory as explained by CERN, think about Shiva more closely. He danced the world into existence according to Hindu religion and he could dance it out of existence. Could this have a double meaning? When the announcement was made, CERN was going to power up the LHC. Speculation and major concerns arose about them trying to recreate the Big Bang Theory and that it could have severe consequences. Famous physicists like Stephen Hawking were not celebrating the LHCs and stated that worrisome feature that it could become unstable at extremely high energies and create a black hole that would collapse the universe and went on to say in his book Star Mist, this could happen at any time and we wouldn't see it coming. While the mainstream media and scientists scoff at this warning and say even if it were the case it could take years labeling those who fear the Hatcher Club as doomsday fear mongers, I personally don't want to take any chances. Another huge concern are stranglets, which are in a hypothetical 
particle consisting of a bound state of roughly equal numbers of up and down and strange quarks. Its size would be a minimum of a few femtometers across with the mass of a light nucleus. The concern in a theory of how stringlets could pose a threat to Earth with the production of cosmic rays that the LHG is as follows. If the strange matter hypothesis is correct and its surface tension is larger than the aforementioned critical value, then a larger stringlet would be more stable than a smaller one. One speculation that has resulted from the ideal is that a stringlet coming into contact with a lump of ordinary matter convert the ordinary matter to strange matter. The ice nine like disaster scenario is as follows. One stringlet hits a nucleus, catalyzing its immediate conversion to a strange matter. This liberates energy, producing a larger, more stable stringlet, which in turn hits another nucleus, catalyzing its conversion to a strange matter. In the end, all the nuclei of all the atoms of Earth are converted, and Earth is reduced to a hot, large lump of strange matter. Doesn't that just sound like purging with fire there? So, the first round so far didn't seem to destroy the universe, but it did bring about the discovery of Higgs balls, in which some even think it's a hoax. CERN was set to power back on the LHC this March, but encountered a delay with a short circuit, and are working on getting back up. It's a power since I've heard of speculation um, of it interfering with the electromagnetic field of the Earth, which would be dangerous because it protects us from solar flares. And we've been seeing more solar flares hurling towards Earth. Whether or not that is true, it is up to question. I have seen speculation all over the web that Flight 9525 went down near CERN. It could have been affected by the LHG, despite the media telling us that it was a result of a pilot with a history of mental illness who managed to hide it. And my question to them is how do you hide it with all the background checks? How did no one know that he was mentally ill? And why does history of depression now qualify someone as mentally ill when everyone goes through a state of depression at one point in their life? Does that mean that everyone has a temporary phase of mental illness? I do believe um, based on all of the risk factors if the particle accelerator is powerful and does manage to prove rainbow gravity um, which now when they power back on the LHC they will seek out tiny black holes which could prove the existence of little parallel universes. The theorizing comes in when you go back to 2011 and look at the earthquake in Japan. Some linked it to the LHC that was going strong. Then some worry that they aren't telling us the whole story about the Hadron Collider. That they are actually trying to open dimensional portals and bridge the gap between space and time. What about the odd case of John Teeter that I discussed in my Time Travel Explorer video who was found by CERN claiming that he had traveled from another time period and he was taken away and deemed crazy. Is that a coincidence? I've heard, but I can't verify this, that there has been UFO activity seen near CERN. Also another strange parallel is the LHC resembles the Mayan calendar. Shiva, who is associated with the destruction and shares a similarity with Apollyon or Abaddon described in the fifth trumpet in Revelation either 9 or 10 and I talked about how I believe Abaddon or Apollyon could be linked to Azazel one of the watchers who had all sin ascribed to him and was punished the worst of all of them. Some feel they are trying to unleash things that are bound demons maybe even some of the fallen angels described in Jude 1 6 and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under judgment of the great day. The same angels from Genesis 6 4 that came to earth cohabited with women and set up themselves as gods and goddesses and later were wiped away in the flood. Do you find it coincidental CERN was another organization that formed just after World War II. 1954 isn't that long after the World War II ended. If you believe in any of the occult um, stories of World War II, connecting it to Roswell and everything else, technology really took off afterwards and beast technology otherwise, known as fallen angel technology, was introduced. Could any of this have something to do with the strange sounds different people have been hearing randomly around the world, or even figures like the dark horse seen in Saudi Arabia or the black or seen near the volcano in Colima, Mexico. We know that witches believe in the old ones or the wise ones, otherwise known as the watchers. And 
that many spells are done unto them, and those in the occult who perform blood sacrifices use blood. And do you know why? Fallen angels crave blood. Could that be why um, the plane went down near CERN? They need it. blood because it bounds them to earth. They are not residents of this earth, but visitors. Unlike demons who are stuck roaming and need to possess a body, fallen angels have a body, but blood is what they feed off of. And I believe that's where legends like vampires come in. Some say the purpose of the Hatch and Collider with searching for Higgs boss and when it first, before it found it, um, was they were actually looking for God. So during Armageddon, um, with advanced weaponry, that they could actually try to kill him or defeat him, which sounds really extreme. It really does. But I wouldn't really put it past um, them or Satan. And some believe that the Antichrist may come through a portal and will have the ability to time travel or control time. And they point to Daniel 7.25 when it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. One other thing I noticed as far as 2015 goes, there seems to be the ongoing theme of the Phoenix. There was the Super Bowl held in Phoenix, Arizona, and Katy Perry with the halftime show. She had some kind of Phoenix act that she did where she really did remind me of a Phoenix. And then also at WrestleMania, I was informed that this year's um, act, Kid Ink, Skylar Gray, and Travis Barker, there was some kind of song they had with a Phoenix in it. And if you know anything about the Phoenix rising from the ashes, bursting into flames, I could connect it back to the Antichrist, and also you could connect it back to the fallen angels, being unbound, rising from the flames. It's all very interesting how it all connects. There are so many theories and ideals how this all could play out, but it seems ominous, and who really knows for certain, but I will say that what CERN is up to definitely does seem suspicious. Another thing I wanted to point out, and this is pretty off topic, and I've done it again. I've gone from facts and solid science to speculation theory and quote-unquote pseudoscience with no concrete proof, but that's okay. I want to share some strange happenings that I noticed with myself and ask anyone out there if in any of their dreams this has ever happened or they know someone that has had this happen. And it's been happening to me frequently. And I wonder sometimes if it's a result of someone or something tampering with the space and time continuum. And first up, before getting into it, I just want to say that everyone experiences deja vu. Some believe that deja vu is someone traveling through time trying to change the past and then we experience some kind of interruption. And that's what deja vu is. Others say it's a dream we don't remember or I don't know all the ideals for it, but it is interesting. It does seem kind of far-fetched, the time travel thing, because I'm still kind of skeptical on it, but there is a such thing as mental time travel. Well, as far as time travel goes, most doubt it, but in my dream at least, I know there are others I have been able to go to the past. Now, I discuss mental time travel in the Time Travel Explorer video, but not dream time travel, and they share a close relation. When you dream, you are in another realm or plane of existence, and that is what makes us more susceptible to the spirit realm. Well, I just shared this, I went to sleep, and suddenly against my will, I've gone back in time. Everything around me moved so fast. Um... Kind of like what Einstein's theory of relativity describes, that if you move at the speed of light, then you're able to travel time. And then I'm in the moment in the past. Sometimes it's beyond my lifespan. Um, one in particular that I can remember really well is I actually saw my grandfather, who I never met because he died when my mother was 10. But I actually went back and I saw the exact moment that he died in my mom. And it was weird because I describe the incident to her. I'm like, I saw you sleeping in the bed. You had a dream that he was dying. And I described it so well. She's like, that is exactly what happened. So it kind of made me wonder. But the thing about the whole ordeal was, before any of that had happened, um, there was a fallen angel that came and it tried to give me a ring. And that's when I went back and then I saw that stuff and I ripped that ring off because I know I wasn't supposed to see what I was seeing. And it it took it and hurried up and rushed away. But not all of the time travel dreams have I had a fallen angel right there by me. 
But the point I'm making is maybe there's a connection to um, fallen angels, demons, and even time travel as far as dreams go. Because I will say this because I was having this conversation with someone, but I do believe that when we look at God, he might exist outside of time. Like even angels exist outside of time because they're immortal. And so they're in a different realm or plane. And this is why the Hadron Collider is such a concern to those who believe that they could open portals and the gates of hell could spill into the earth. It sounds like supernatural. But um, if they exist outside of our realm of existence, then time for them doesn't work the same. Think back to Daniel 10.13 and Daniel 10.20, whenever Gabriel is talking to uh, Daniel about how he had to fight the prince of Persia, and then he goes, he has to fight the prince of Grisha, and um, it took him a while to get there. But could some of the delay even be with um, how they travel? Like, it takes them time, and it could be complicated for angels, especially fallen angels, because they don't have heavenly glory. They're not as powerful as they used to be to remain on Earth and stay here. They hate it here. That's why I believe they take up residence in the heavenlies or outer space. Um, and so that's why blood is so important to keep them here. But what I was, where I was going with all this is that I just wonder if traveling in time in your dreams has anything to do with being connected to, you know, otherworldly entities or interdimensional beings. Um, and the other thing is, I feel if astral projection, remote viewing, is possible. That I'm guessing. That experiences like my own are authentic to some degree. Of course, I could, I wouldn't recommend trying to time travel in your dreams willingly or in a lucid state. It has pretty overwhelming effects, and I always felt like it was really unnatural whenever it happened. But I thought I'd throw that out there. I know it was off topic. One thing I wanted to point out with um, Hadron Collider and its connection to even entertainment is that on the Flash. Um, Barry Allen gets his powers from an incident that happens at Star Labs with a particle accelerator. And it reminded me kind of of um, Static Shock, that cartoon series where they have the Big Bang. Because now there's all these mutants because of some incident that occurred. But just even the way that Star Labs looks in The Flash, if you look at it closely, I believe it's really eerily similar to... Hadron Collider. Of course, there are other particle accelerators around the world, but just a theory. Maybe they're trying to give people superhuman powers. I don't know. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Oh, and one other thing, too, with it. Um, I've heard people say the Flash, because, you know, the Flash symbol, it could be a thunderbolt, could be a satanic symbol, and then he's falling in the picture, like, that they have for him. Like, if I can find it. There's a picture where he's running through the city, and some use that to uh, say that it's like he's falling from heaven like lightning, kind of like the Antichrist. But I just thought that was an interesting connection with something on TV where they show us a similar scenario to the Hadron Collider. And then one last thing I want to add, with the Hadron Collider and what CERN is doing, and how some speculate that it's messing with the electromagnetic field of the Earth and it could be causing earthquakes. Some feel that it could also have a connection to the ley lines and affecting those as well. Just another theory, throwing it out there. I hope you found it interesting and we'll just see how things fare in the future because I'm sure there will be more updates coming up but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'd like to thank you for watching and take care and God bless.